Hello, and welcome to Zanata Consulting's Beginner Series. In this segment, we're going to talk about how to send a campaign. I'm Brett Martin. I'm Tyler Colt. Let's get right into it, Tyler. Yeah, so here we're kind of opening up in a fresh account of Zoho campaigns. Uh, we do have an existing mailing list inside of here uh, that we created actually in our previous uh, beginner's guide video on how to sync from uh, the CRM. So now we're ready to go ahead and jump in and actually send that campaign. So what we'll go ahead and do is go over to the campaigns tab and we'll see there's actually a couple different types of campaigns. Uh, so a regular campaign, of course, is just going to be one email that's going out to a particular list. You can also run different social campaigns and actually run these through different social media platforms. You can run advanced campaigns, which include anything from, you know, A-B testing, uh, sending out RSS feeds, you know, a monthly roll-up of your blog to different survey-based campaigns or, you know, e-commerce-based campaigns here. And last but not least, of course, you can also send SMS campaigns uh, directly via Zoho campaigns. Um, but for today, we're just going to focus on sending out just one, you know, regular campaign out to a list. So I'll go ahead and jump into our regular campaigns and get started. So, you know, Zoho campaigns kind of breaks this down into four primary things that you'll need to set up. First is going to be the subject line. Of course, we need to define what we're going to call the email. Next is going to be who is going to send it. You know, so do you want to send it from info at Zanata? Do you want to send it based on whoever owns it in the CRM? Right. There's a couple different options there. Then we'll choose the recipients. So you could either choose a list, multiple lists, or you know, some segments of different lists that you have in the system. And then last but not least, we'll go ahead and create our content. So, you know, let's say here that we're going to send out an email about a sale that we're having. So, you know, maybe we want to call this our beginning of year sale. So I'll go ahead and give the campaign an informative name. This is just internal. So it's really just for us to know what this campaign is. The customer will never see this. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and add a subject line. We'll go ahead and just create a subject line here. We can also personalize this by including the context first or last name. So maybe we want to go ahead and add the customer's name here. And, you know, say, Brett, we're running a sale, right? So we can actually pull in these values just based on what we have on file for that customer. And then you have the pre-header. You probably have seen these before when you go ahead and you'll get an email and you'll see it'll actually have this subject line in it. Under the subject line, it'll have some header like we, you don't want to miss this deal. And you'll notice when you open the email, it's completely gone. And this is just one of those things that actually shows up when you're looking in the preview uh, window inside of your email. So kind of important if you want to get that little extra tagline in there. Yep. And so once we've defined that, we can go ahead and move on to step two where we're going to add our sender, right? So here we'll go ahead and add our sender details. And here's kind of the biggest choice to make is this first option. You know, do we want to send this from, you know, just a predefined sender or do we want to send this out from our CRM owner address? Um, I think a good way to decide here is, is really just based on the type of email. So if this is like a, an action driven email, you might want to send it from whoever owns it in the CRM. Because then if they respond to that, like, yes, I'm interested, it'll actually go to the person that they're used to communicating with versus something that's maybe more general, like a newsletter. You know, you'll want to send this from an info at or, you know, a, a newsletters at or something like that that's more general. Um, that being said, if, if you're not sure, uh, go ahead and send it from the CRM owner address. Uh, just to make it a little bit more personable. And usually it will pull in the sender's name, but you actually have the ability to customize this a little bit. This is our demo account. So we've actually only got one user in it. So you can go ahead and put the name in. And this is actually who it's going to come from. So when they see it, it will actually have, this is the name that's going to be displayed in the from field. And then lastly, kind of a minor thing you can do is actually change who it's going to reply to. So maybe if we wanted this to reply to support ad or something like that, we could add that as an email address and define it that way. 
If you're sending it though from the owner, like uh, Tyler was saying earlier, you'll probably want to flip it over to the CRM owner's address. That way it's going to come back to them. Yep. All righty. Now that we've defined our sender, we're ready to move on to our recipients. So I'll go ahead and add our recipients. And if you watched our previous getting started uh, tutorial we did, we actually went through how to set up uh, an import from the CRM. And we did a little small one where we showed you how to import customers, then break it down into a segment where it would only be vice president. But in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and choose the customers. Yep, and one thing that's important to note is that you can choose more than one. So I could say, send it to all customers and everyone on the GDPR list, or I could even say, send it to a segment of customers and everyone on the GDPR list. In this case, we'll go ahead and just send it out to our customer list. Okay, and then last but not least, of course, we're gonna go ahead and create the content for our campaign. So once I go ahead to create this, I have a couple different options. So if I've ever saved templates, I can pull one in from there. Zoho also has a lot of pre-designed templates, you know, that are actually going to have content, imagery, and things like that within them. Or I could kind of choose a drag and drop template, you know, where it's going to be kind of designed and maybe I drop in the text and images where necessary. Uh, last but not least, you can also create these um, by coding HTML directly into campaigns or uploading it. Or you can create them as a plain text, which is basically going to appear like a hand typed email. Yeah, and the uh, import upload HTML is really important because oftentimes people are moving to campaigns from another marketing, email marketing platform. So if you're moving, say, from MailChimp or Constant Contact, maybe you have designed really nice email layouts in HTML, you usually can just grab that HTML, upload it into here, and then you just have to make some minor changes, mostly to, to tags and things like that. When you're inserting custom fields into it, you'll change those, but the rest, otherwise, you basically can easily copy your templates from one platform to another by using that import HTML. So in our case here, I'll go ahead and use one of these basic templates um, and kind of walk through a couple of the different options here. So when I choose that, we're going to see, you know, kind of the skeletons that they're providing for us to use. And we can choose really any of these options to move forward. So I'll go ahead and just choose kind of a simple one here. Actually, let's do a blank one. And I'll show kind of adding some of these options. So let's go ahead and select our template. And so over here on the left, we have all of the different elements that we can use to actually create one of these templates. So maybe we want to delete it off with a banner image and go ahead and just, you know, click and drag this right over. And then I can choose any local file or option here that I want to upload. And so then once we have our image uploaded, we can go ahead and choose the sizing. So in this case, we see this image came in maybe a little bit too big for the page. So they have a couple pre pre chosen options where I can say, make it small, make it medium, um, you know, make it the original size. I can fit it as a banner, which again, in this case, is going to make this a little bit big, but this is kind of the standard sizing that you would use. For something like this that's a logo, we'll go ahead and just use a medium sized um, option. I'll have it centered on the page just like this. And you also could make that that image hyperlink. There was an, there's an option to put a URL in. So if people click on it, it could take them back to your website or whatever offer you maybe you had that you wanted to put in. And next, you know, you can go through here and add all the different types of content that you may want to have. So something like this, you may have something like an image and text where you drop this in and you have, you know, here's an image, awesome product on sale. And of course, then you can drop in your image right over here to make that available for them to view. Okay. So as you can see, we've put in a coffee mug from the CRM Zen show. And now you've got your basic newsletter or promotion ready to go out. And of course, there's so much that you can do as far as sizing this. You know, if you look, you can add text, you can add images, you can add dividers, you can add buttons, you can put a poll in here, you can drop tables. It just goes on and on. You can even insert a video. And once you have your content all locked in just how you want it, you can go ahead and click this save and next. 
or you can even actually save this as a template to your library to be used in the future, yeah. which can I, be really helpful because you're going to have similar styled and similar content emails over time. And I highly recommend most of your newsletters or if it's a newsletter or something like that, they're going to be fairly complicated. You might have a lot going on in there. And even if you think it's simple, it's really important to do the old preview and test. And when you click on preview and test, it's going to let you put in any email that you want to send it to. And that way you can actually take a look at it in your inbox, make sure it's perfect, make sure everything's lined up. Uh, it's strange, but sometimes the what you see when you save this isn't exactly what you get at the end of the day. And you've just got a few small tweaks that you'll want to make to it. And then you can see what it's going to look like on mobile. You can see what's going to look like as a desktop. If it's just plain text if for people that actually get plain text these days, you can even view it that way as well. So pretty important that you send yourself a test email. And once you have all that locked in, we can go ahead and save and move forward. We'll see if there's kind of one final step that comes in once you add your content, which is sending the campaign out for review. Uh, this is an automated process, generally takes just a quick little turnaround time. Uh, Zoho is just scanning it for anything, you know, explicitly inappropriate or, you know, fraudulent or spam E, right? So it's just important that they do this first. Um, and again, it generally just takes couple moments for this to be completed. So while we're waiting for that to be approved, let's talk about some of the advanced options that are also available when setting up a campaign. So there's kind of a handful of different things you can do here. Um, if you do have Google Analytics enabled on any URLs that you're using in your campaign, you can actually turn on some pre-baked tracking there. Um, some important ones, you know, integrations to the CRM, you can actually create this as a CRM campaign and associate any of these contacts to that campaign, you know, tracking that they've been sent this email. And it's really important uh, to leave these two on. Um, when you create a campaign in CRM, basically now, anytime if you were to go look at any contact in the CRM, you'll be able under campaigns as a related list, you can see every campaign that was sent to them. You can see whether or not they opened it, whether or not they clicked on it, what level of engagement they had. So if you're in sales and you know, you've been working on a lead and you've got all sorts of campaigns that have been going out to them and you go and you look at that lead and you see that they've never even opened a single one of them, they've never done anything with it. You probably think it's probably not going to be a particularly hot lead but then at the same time you go in there and you've got another lead where man they've opened they've clicked and they've got four you know you've, you've got a much better chance and that kind of ties into the scoring and so scoring is basically assigning different point values to actions that they may take on this email so if i go ahead and set up scoring i can go ahead and assign these scores and so different things we can score on are unique open so the first open multiple opens, so any future opens that they make, then unique and multiple clicks, unique and multiple replies, or positive reply, which Zoho is going to apply text recognition to try to guess something's positive. Um, if, they, if this is an opt-in email, they can score on that, or score on telling a friend if you have a forward link. And then lastly, if they unsubscribe or if they send a negative reply, we can actually score them off of those actions as well. So now that we've set those up, we can go ahead and look at the last of our advanced options here, which is going to be response actions. So these are basically things that you can do to uh, automate what happens based on them clicking or based on them opening an email, right, that we've sent to them. So to configure these, we can come in and say, let's say if they are to click an email, we want to, you know, add them to a different list, maybe we want to assign a tag or add them to a workflow, which is a longer form automated sequence of emails, just based on them clicking one of these emails here. And we'll be covering that on a future beginner's guide. Okay, we cut away for a little bit here. It took, I would say about five minutes and then Zoho actually went ahead, probably a little less than that, and Zoho went ahead and approved our campaign. Now, once your campaign's approved, you'll get an email telling you it's been approved, or if you're just sitting inside campaigns and you just refresh every couple minutes, once your campaign's approved, you'll be taken to this screen where you have several options. And so we can either choose to send this campaign right away, we can schedule the campaign for the future, or we can actually send it in batches. So if you have a really big list, you might want to break it into a couple different sends. Rather than going so this, out all at once. This one was six. We should probably parse it out one at a time every hour just <laughs> to make sure they all go through. So in this case, let's go ahead and just schedule this out. 
uh, oftentimes you do want to schedule them so you can send at a good time of day, right? So if we were sending this right now, this would be 12 p.m. Eastern or 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific. Um, in this case, let's go ahead and schedule this. And there's a lot of theories around scheduling these overall, you know, how, when they should go out, how they should go out. Um, you know, a lot of it's around availability. If you look at things like webinars, uh, the, the theory is usually Tuesdays or Wednesdays or Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time. That tends to be an open period of time. More people can attend. They, Mondays and Fridays are bad days for those. You kind of want to hit your time zones. Uh, there's a lot of ways. Do you want it to be in their inbox first thing in the day? You know, you, you really want to think about this. And you, there's a lot of places you can read and figure out, hey, when's the best time to send these things out? I kind of like 6 or 7 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, that usually gets in everybody's inbox first thing in the morning. And it's one of the first things they see if you're trying to put a promotion out like this. On the other hand, a lot of other people do that as well. So you'll notice oftentimes when you wake up in the morning, you know, they're just flooded with all of these uh, basically announcements and campaigns that are being run out. So play around with it a little bit and you'll eventually figure out what's going to get you the best traction. And so within Zoho, our, our three options here, either to, you know, set this at a fixed time zone, set it based on recipients time zones. So this is if you have that information, if you have some address information on file for them, or you can send it based on their optimal open time. Now this one really only want to use if you've been mailing out to this list for a while. Um, reason being is that it's tracking when people are opening. So it'll know it, you know, once you've sent five or 10 emails. In this case, let's go ahead and just set a fixed time and time zone. So let's say we want to send this out on a Monday morning. We can go ahead and say we're going to send it on the 8th. And we want to send this at, let's say, 7 AM. Again, time zone is important here. So I want to make sure that we set this up on the proper time zone. And once we schedule this, we are ready to go. So we can go ahead here and now our campaign is scheduled to go out. And that is how you set up a campaign in Zoho Campaigns. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.